In today's video, I'm going to show you what I class as the titans among the isopods in the hobby. And that is, of course, the Porcelio Hoffman Seigai. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So in this pot here was my order of Porcelio Hoffman's Seigai, one of the largest uh, terrestrial isopods you can get in the hobby and unfortunately it appears that two of them had actually already passed away in transit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these two out for you and you can see the true size of these guys and then we'll have a look at some of the alive ones scurrying around so here they are in size comparison, absolute monsters of the isopod world. Now I am a little disheartened that I've got two dead specimens in the 10 that I purchased from the spider shop, but these things do happen, these guys could have been old. Um, they also are kind of territorial, something I'll explain in a moment. The Hoffman Seigai come in a few different morphs here, if you can see that this one has a slightly more chocolate brown coloration whereas this one is more your standard uh, dark grey with white outline so you can kind of separate these as well so that you can kind of have a pure culture of one of the colors if i were to get a few more of these chocolate brown ones i could separate those and eventually gain a full colony of chocolate brown ones but that might have been the only one in there of that coloration so i am gutted that these have died but as i said I don't think it was anything to do with packing. I've never had a problem from these guys in my entire life. Um, and I'm not going to put any form of complaint about it either. So that's the underside of these giant isopods. Now I could be wrong, but I think these are male. I think those that have those really long protrusions is a sign of a male. Um, which I think both of these are. Let's see if we can spot a female in the tub. Yes, so here we have the female. You see the protrusions are much shorter. So we do have a mixture of males and females in here, thank goodness, because I really want to breed these guys. So this is just how they came in the pot. There was a bit of cardboard in there too. Um, hopefully no more have died. Let's place you there. Don't run off, please. No, don't run off. Oh, you're stuck to me now, okay. Let's just check your brethren. One, two, three, four, five, six. There should be two more in here somewhere underneath. Um, ooh, let's hope so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can see all eight. And you can see that one's got slightly more brown, although it's not quite chocolate brown. It's got slightly more brown tinge to it. Um, and these rest of them seem to have the sort of grey size. Now, for comparison's sake, just seeing it next to my hand, I don't think that does justice for the Hoffman Seigai. So I'm going to get out one of my Porcelio Davis dairy cows for you to see the size difference. So here we go. See that white one with the black spots? That's a Porcelio Davis dairy cow. And you can see the huge size difference between those isopods and these isopods. Now, although I class these as the Titans, I don't class them as the kings. You'll have to see a future video to see which one I class as the king of isopods. So I'm gonna take this uh, dairy cow out, pop it back in with all the others. Um, they're actually due a substrate change, or a semi-substrate change in fact, very, very soon. Um, I may do a video on that, but honestly, I think that'd be quite boring for you to see. So I'll just cover it briefly here. I kind of, sift out a chunk of the substrate then I add more in um, with all the nutrients and all the goodies on like I did in my substrate creation video basically that will leave them then to thrive further they're actually in this one here so as you can see there are hundreds of these guys now they are going to need something bigger than this believe it or not but uh, I do plan on selling a lot of these off like there's literally so many in here. So here's about the best shot I can get of a Hoffman Seigai. Sat on some moss there. Now they've been a bit lethargic. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that these guys are okay. They don't have anywhere near as much movement as the dairy cow did in that pot. 
I mean they're just sat there perhaps they're cold from transit um, I'm just hoping that they're going to be able to thrive and I don't just find them all dead like these guys where are they here yeah. that would be really really sad this is a species that costs a lot of money um, and I really really want to be able to establish a colony of these so there we have it the female Hoffman sea guy on a piece of bark now I don't want to bring them into Camorabi I was going to but I think I might lose them in Camorabi if they just climb under one bit of moss I might not ever find it again and as I'm down to eight already from the get-go I really don't want to risk that so there we have her on some bark I seriously need a macro lens I'm going to invest in a macro lens I think especially as I want to get into more isopod keeping yes beautiful let's find one more thing to place one of these isopods on perhaps a rock no my rock picture isn't going to come out so I picked this rock because it's kind of got a reddish tinge to it I thought it might bring out the dark greys and whites of the Hoffman Seigai but uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to get a very good shot there. What do you guys think of the Hoffman Seagai? Do you want one in your collection? Or do you have them in your collection? Pretty sweet species. Now I'm going to be chucking in the dead ones um, because they will actually feast on their dead so we'll pop them there we'll let them even decompose a bit I'll tuck them underneath there we are and then I decided to place the moss on the top of those instead kind of allow them to degrade over time and I added this extra mossy stick just for fun so now we're going to get in our Hoffman Sega just going to pour them gently in you got any left in here? I don't think so. So there they are. Uh, we've got a bit more movement now. They've got that freedom to move around. But you want to know about uh, territorial size to these, right? So you'll find often a mother will stick with her own brood. I'm not sure how fighting commences within ice pods. Something I'll have to observe and learn on my own. But I do know that they tend to congregate to different parts of the enclosure. So although this enclosure might seem not that big for congregating they will only take up a small space like this sort of size here and then we might have another one take up space over here and then over here and then i'll just get several smaller tubs of these rather than one large one where they could kind of intertwine their own little colonies and might have some form of aggression shown like i said I'm not sure how that aggression works within the world of isopods i'm not even sure if it's just the mother's defense of her brood or whether it is the males fighting for the females, I don't know. But I do know that they're very maternal and they do like to stay with their particular brood. So it is possible there are even fights within that pot. I really don't know. I'm learning along with you guys. My research on these isopods have just been over the course of the last three or four weeks, plus the knowledge I already had with my dairy cows. But, uh, the rest of it, the more advanced learning of isopods, as I said previously, has to be done by observing. And you see this one's gone straight to the moist, wet side. It's there within the moss, the wet moss. Perhaps taking a drink or just exploring. And it's the only one that stayed in the open, the others have gone into the shadows. You can see that one there and that one there going into some sheltered area and I think this one's going to do the same but I'm going to observe these every few days I'm not going to do it every day because I don't want to cause too much disruption with lighting and so on but that's how I'm going to learn about these titans and I'll keep you guys updated hopefully with there only being eight now I manage to continue the breeding of these so I'm going to pop in that bit of tissue as well just in case there's any mankai baby isopods on the tissue and as I've said in each video I will remove the tissue afterwards so we've only got one more species that I'm going to be featuring in this isopod thing and that will be our 
king of isopods in my eyes, which should be your next video. And then that will be it for the isopod series for now, until I've learned a bit more and got some new species. Mind you, this is being recorded way in advance, so it's possible I got some more species by the time this comes out. Who knows? But I'll let you guys know either way. So I'm going to wrap this video up by one last look at our Porcelio Hoffman Segei. Take care, guys. Do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grants you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy crawly. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.